to my YouTube channel. I feel like I say this in so many sit down videos, but please ignore my hair. I'm going to the hospital later, which I'm fine. I'm just getting my wisdom teeth removed, but I braided my hair to like just get it out of the way and maybe I should have waited until I was finished filming this video. But today is going to be my February reading wrap up. I read a total of four books this month. I know last month I said in the video I read a total of five books when in reality I only read four and I was in the process of reading another one so sorry about that but yeah I'm just gonna talk about these books a little bit, ramble about them. I have a lot to say about some of them <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy this video. So the first book on my list is Better Than The Movies by Lynn Painter. Do you yourself a favor and go buy this book. This is probably, never mind my new favorite romance book, just my favorite book of all time. This is everything I would have wanted it to be. It is the definition of a perfect romance book. This book follows the main character Liz and she has a crush on this guy, I think his name is Michael, but Michael had moved away when they were younger and now he has moved back and he still kind of sees Liz as like the cute little innocent girl that she used to be and like deep down she still kind of is and she's trying really hard to prove to him that she's not the old Liz anymore and like blah 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 and she really wants to go to prom with him. So she asks her neighbor Wes to help her out since Wes is also friends with Mitchell. Mitchell? Oh, was it Michael or Mitchell? I can't remember. It was something like that. But yeah, Wes and Liz are actually neighbors and they deeply hate each other. Well, not deeply, but basically you can probably tell it's an enemies to lovers. But this was such a cute book. Oh my gosh. First of all, there are a bunch of references to famous rom-coms. Like, first of all, if you just look on the cover, I don't know where all of these like scenes are actually from, but I know like this one about like kissing in the rain is from The Notebook. And then this one is from Dirty Dancing. And then at the beginning of each chapter, there's a reference from a rom-com. So like, I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. And that reference is from Notting Hill. Oh, and in the book, Liz is like absolutely obsessed with rom-coms. There's also a bunch of music references that I absolutely love because for anyone that doesn't know, music is my life. <laughs> to be honest, I actually don't know that much about like music, like the popular artists or like genres and stuff, but I do spend a lot of time listening to music and making playlists. And I don't know, the fact that there was so much music in this book, just, it was so much fun. And then Lynn Painter also added a playlist at the end of the book, which I absolutely love it when authors do that. It just makes me think about the book so much longer than I usually would. I probably would still be thinking about this book even if there wasn't a playlist at the end, but. And one of my favorite songs of all time is on this playlist, Ocean Eyes by Billie Eilish. So this was just, I absolutely love reading this book. It's officially a comfort book of mine. It's just, it's one of those books where your cheeks literally start to hurt because you are smiling so much. It was just so cute. This was definitely five stars, maybe even six stars. I know that's technically not a rating, but this is so far my favorite book I've ever read. It is just so adorable. I actually also completely forgot to mention that Lynn Painter's books, or at least her writing style, is absolutely hilarious she is genuinely such a funny person and all the characters that she was writing about were all so so funny in their own way and very realistic as well i know a lot of people said it was unrealistic but for me it was realistic because like a lot of people that i know are like that but that's what i wanted to say and literally the day that i finished this book lynn painter announced that she's coming out with a sequel so i'm just so happy i love this book so much i love lynn painter as well she's probably one of my new favorite authors i really want to read some of her other books i don't think she has a lot i think she has like three or four other books but I definitely do want to read them because I absolutely loved this book. Okay, so the next book I read is technically not a book, it's a novella, and it is Fracture Me. So I'm in the process of reading the Shatter Me series, and in between the books, there are these little novellas that you can read. You don't absolutely have to read them to understand the story better, but it does really, really help because each one is out of a different character's perspective. And this novella has two novellas inside, if that makes sense. One from Warner's perspective and then one from Adam's perspective, which are the two love interests. I'm so happy I read both of these because they completely changed my perspective on both characters. Okay, I think my perspective on them would still kind of be where it is now, just by like where I am in the series. But this still just gave me so much insight into the way they both think. But yeah, the first half, which is Warner's half you read after you read the first book, and then the second half you read after you read the second book. And I've read 
already done my review on the first half from a perspective in what I read in January. If you haven't already watched that video, I'll link it in the description. But yeah, and now I read Adam's Half, which is Fracture Me, and ugh, Adam. I was really rooting for Adam. I didn't like strongly like him, but he was nice. And I was like, I couldn't understand why everyone ended up liking Warner because I feel like Adam was perfectly fine. And like Warner's the bad guy. And after reading this, I deeply, deeply hate him. <laughs> but the way Adam thinks about Juliet is honestly sad because like reading from Warner's perspective he didn't necessarily think of her for who she was at that moment but he thought of her as he saw her as the amazing person that she is she might have not been that amazing person at the moment he saw the potential and like Juliet explains in one of the future books when she does something amazing Warner isn't even surprised because he knows that she does amazing things like I know saying it now I sound cringy, but I really like the way Warner sees Juliet. And then Adam, he sees her as the weakling. He literally called her a weakling. I'm not even kidding. And he just saw her as like, not necessarily pathetic. And I do think in some level he did care for her, but he just saw her as like this sad kind of like, not necessarily useless, but not very useful person and that just made me really sad because i thought they did really care for each other and i don't know i i just really don't like adam after reading this book i gave this a three stars not necessarily because the novella was bad i just didn't enjoy it because i feel like there's a difference between a book being bad and me just not vibing with the book and i feel like it was more on like me not vibing with it because i feel like the writing and everything was fine it was just that i don't like adam and the way he speaks of juliet but i know that was like intended to be like that so maybe like a four stars i don't know but i didn't enjoy adam's perspective but like i don't think it was bad writing does that make sense okay so the next book that i read is ignite me which is the third book in the shatter me series i also reviewed the first two books in my every book i read in january but this is officially one of my new favorite series of all time <laughs> like the first two books are not that good <laughs> Or like the first one was good and then the second one just was not good. I I don't know, I hated it personally. But the third book gets so good. I don't even know how to express it because I feel like I'm just gonna completely spoil the story. But it was just so much more fun to read than the first two books because if you don't know what the Shatter Me series is, it's basically about this girl, Juliet, that if she touches someone, they die. So like she can't touch anyone. But it's very much Hunger Games vibes, but like post hunger games like kind of like this teenage girl against the government i don't know that's just the vibes that i was getting but yeah and in the first book you kind of hear like obviously juliet's thoughts and it was very interesting to read about in the first book just to kind of see how her mind works but then in the second book it just got a little bit much there was she just had a lot of self-doubts and it just wasn't that fun for me to read about personally and i just i don't know the second book wasn't that good but the third book, oh my gosh. I really don't know how to explain this book without spoiling the story, but this was a five stars for me. I really, really enjoyed it. But something happens at the end of the second book that completely changes Juliet's perspective of everything to be honest and she's so much more confident in this book and it's so refreshing and nice to read about after reading the second book because oh my gosh, the second book but yeah, and she's much more confident in this book. It's so nice to read about. There's also a lot that goes on in this book. This is like the book where the action like really starts to happen. And then there was another character, okay? His name is Kenji. Probably one of my new favorite characters of all time. He is so funny. The amount of stuff that I highlighted in this book of him just making jokes. <laughs> I don't know if everyone will find it funny because it's just very similar to my sense of humor. Like very like flirty and like low-key narcissistic but yeah i really enjoyed this book five stars for me but yeah if you plan on reading the series please just give the first three books a try because i would have like easily put down this series after the second book but everyone like on youtube and people i know in real life were just like please just read the third book and then you can put it down if you really still want to because that's where like it really starts getting good and i'm very happy i did because i really enjoyed it and i really cannot wait to finish the series okay so the last book i finished in february was Beatry by emily henry now please Hear me out. I think this book is slightly 
overhyped now hear me out <laughs> it wasn't bad i like fairly enjoyed it it just wasn't what i was expecting i also don't really know what i was expecting i just think i was expecting more of like a like i put the book down and i stare at a wall for the next 10 minutes because i'm just like that was an amazing book and as i said it wasn't terrible it wasn't bad i fairly enjoyed it it just wasn't like amazing like it was a good book that's it. This book follows January, who is a hopeless romantic and writes romance novels for a living. And she ends up temporarily staying at her dad's old beach house. And while she is there, she meets another writer who ends up being her neighbor, Gus. And both of them are kind of in a bit of a writing block. So they end up making a bit. January needs to write Gus's genre and Gus is going to write January's genre. To be honest, I can't really remember what Gus's genre is exactly. <laughs> I just know he does kind of like the depressing, like sad ending books but yeah and then they have this little bit going that whoever finishes the book first the other person has to give a good review for the book but yeah and then you just kind of follow that journey you also kind of follow january's journey with her family because they ended up finding out that her dad had like a completely different life outside of their family <laughs> and this beach house was his like other life if that makes sense like he was living there on the weekends when he said he was going on i don't need to spoil the whole book but it was just, it was good. I enjoyed it. I will still recommend it. And I definitely want to reread it at some point because there's a lot of stuff I really want to annotate. And only halfway through, I realized that I should have annotated it. So I'll definitely reread it. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't as amazing as everyone was saying it is. I don't know. Just my opinion. But yeah, I did thoroughly enjoy this. I definitely want to read more Emily Henry books. And that is it for everything I have read this month. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Comment down below more book videos that you guys would like to see. I would love to start filming more book videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video.